Thomas, you promised you wouldn't be better than me. <laughs> um, the com how many people here didn't know about the Common Core before they came in, or didn't know enough much about it, came in here to learn about it? Are you getting an education? Okay, the Common Core is not a national program. It is a national emergency. Okay, get that through your head. I'm here to talk about your children. We've heard about data mining. We've heard about the evils of, of everything that goes on with that. Let's talk about what it means to the children. Uh, Jackie spoke so eloquently about her son. I hear this every day in my office. Mothers beside themselves. My child, my child won't go to school. My child doesn't want to do his homework. My child isn't himself anymore. Um, last year, last summer actually, my, I, I see a lot of teachers. Not that teachers are any more mentally you know, problematic than anybody else. I happen to be a referral source for the VOCCAP, so I happen to see a lot of teachers in my office. And my teachers started talking about all this new curriculum they were rolling out. Uh, you know, not last summer, but the summer before. I have to get this like practically Christmas. And, and they were beside themselves. The curriculum was beyond the children. It was above everybody's head. The teachers just couldn't, couldn't take that stress. And I thought nothing of it because, hey, you're a teacher, figure it out, you know? I don't know, I'm, I'm in a private practice, I don't know what goes on in the schools. And then uh, my kids started coming in and they started telling me they were taking their final exams in September. I kind of scratched my head, like, all right, what's going on? October, my phone started ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. I usually get, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 new kids a year. I was getting 10 to 15 in a day. Uh, school guidance counselors, social workers, school psychologists, parents, insurance companies, pediatricians, I mean accountants, anybody. People were referring kids to be left and right. And I kept hearing the same thing over and over again. I couldn't take them all. First of all, you have to understand, I'm a one-girl office. I couldn't take them all. So I don't even know how many of them, what their stories were. I only know the stories of the ones I've, ones I've seen, and every single one came in with the same story. I can't take it anymore. I can't take the stress. I can't take the pressure. It's October. What's the pressure? The test, the test, the test, coming, coming in April. I'm like, what's going on here? But that's when I heard about the Common Core, and I, through my teachers and my kids and my parents, I was able to put it all together, and I, I found out, I started researching this, this monster we call Common Core. I had kids coming in, eighth graders, honor students, self-mutilating, cutting themselves with razor blades, burning themselves with cigarettes, now, that's not a new problem, it's not a new phenomenon. We've got a lot of kids who are, who are self-mutilating. It's a big problem. 10 to 15 calls in a day is a problem. And they weren't coming in and saying, there's pressure at home, or my boyfriend broke up with me, or I don't know, the last episode of General Hospital upset me. It was the, what was going on in school, constantly. And then the little ones. I closed my practice about 10 years ago. I closed my practice to young people because I didn't have uh, young people, you know, itty bitties, below like 12, because I didn't have the facilities anymore to do play therapy. I used to have a room with a, with a table. Um, you know, I don't get down on the floor, I'm over 50. Um, so, so I closed my practice. Suddenly I'm getting all these calls from mothers of eight year olds. And I got intrigued. And I said, well, you know, I don't really see young people because I don't do play therapy. And every mother was saying the same thing to me. You don't need to do play therapy with my child. They can sit through a 45 minute session. What eight-year-old can sit through a 45-minute therapy session without Play-Doh or crayons? Unbelievable. In 18 years, I've never seen anything like this. So I started taking the kids in. And the same thing over and over again. I'm stupid. I'm the stupidest kid in my class. I'm worthless. I'm no good. I have an eight-year-old telling me, I don't even know who I am. Okay. We talk about the standards. Um, Jackie, you talked about the, um, the limbic system. We have a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. That is where all logic and reason occurs. That's where critical thinking occurs. These standards demand critical thinking out of children as young as eight years old. Except that the prefrontal cortex, where all critical thinking occurs, is not fully developed until the age of 24. It is the equivalent of asking a fish to fly. And my little fishes are coming into the office saying, I'm ashamed of my guilt, and there must be something wrong with me. I blame myself for not growing wings. That's what we're doing here. How many people here have the following two items in their house? A 
child and a garbage pail. Yeah, okay, what happens when that tail is full? Does the child pick it up and dump it outside? No. How many mothers say, how many times do I have to tell you if the pail is full, take it outside? You have to tell them each and every time. It's a three-step process. The pail is full, it needs to go out, I'm going to do it. And they're not wired to do that. Sorry moms, it's not going to change. They're not biologically capable. And, and if they get it this time, the next time the pail is full, they're not going to say, oh, that's like the last time. They're not biologically wired to do that. If it's your husband, I can't do anything. <laughs> We talk about, um, Dr. Dodge, he's not here anymore, Dr. Dodge talked about um, wanting to be, us to be globally competitive with China. Let's talk about China. Two years ago, three little girls in China didn't finish their homework. So they cut school. They were 10 and 11 years of age, the, the three girls. They cut school and stayed home all day trying to finish their homework. And they still couldn't finish their homework. So they decided to hold hands and jump off the roof building. Thankfully, they survived. One little girl said, if I'm dead, I won't have to do homework anymore. This year, two young men, school age uh, teenagers, same thing in China, unfortunately were successful at suicide. In China, we want to be globally competitive with China. In China, they put um, nets around the buildings because they keep the employees from flinging themselves out the window in large corporations. Do we want to be competitive with China? I think not. Um, if your kids are doing okay, that's great. Thank God, emotionally. Um, but ask yourself, what's going to happen when they roll out Common Core Science next year? And social studies. We are a P to 20 state. You know what that means? P to 20, Common Core, P to 20, preschool to the age of 20. And actually, what I'm hearing is like 20th grade, because they want to roll this out to law school, medical school, bar exam, every, every exam, every standardized exam under the sun is going to be aligned with the Common Core in New York State. As I said, not a national program, a national emergency. Um, I want to make it very clear that the uh, testing is not the problem. It is a problem. It is not the problem. The Common Core is the problem. All right? We eliminate the testing or reduce the testing or they tweak the testing. And believe me, come March, May or June, every one of those guys in Albany, I get, I get hot, I'm sorry. But every one of those guys in Albany is up for re-election, including the governor next year. And, and every one of them, come May or June, that's when you start to see stuff happen. And you're going to see the testing reduced or APPR tweak, and they're going to say, see moms, we fixed it, vote for me. Okay? In 70 some odd years, in the state of New York, no incumbent in the legislature has ever been voted out of office. We need to make a change here in the state of New York. my statement to Dr. John King, because I am not allowed to go see Dr. John King on Tuesday. They will not give me a spot at the podium, just because I'm not in Senator Laval's district. Even though I'm the only mental health person speaking about this in New York State, it doesn't matter. Uh, Senator John Flanagan wouldn't let me speak at his hearings because mental health is not relevant. Okay? I will say that Al Graff welcomed me with open arms. I am so I'm going to read this because I don't get to read it on Tuesday. Although, I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> My name is Mary Calamere and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I want to thank you for bringing us the Common Core. Business has never been better. If not for the Common Core, I would never have met the eight-year-old who was so afraid of the spring exams, she has to be medicated just to go to school. Or the fourth grader who vomits every morning, certain he is the stupidest kid in the class. Or the lady who has to leave work early, her job in jeopardy, because her seventh grader becomes so hysterical over his homework, she fears for his safety. Or the six-year-old boy who is scratching the skin off of his face, drawing blood every time he does his homework. Or the eight-year-old who picks his skin obsessively and has to go to school with band-aids all over his face. 
or the honor student who carved the word stupid into her wrist with a razor blade after last year's math assessment scores came out. Without the Common Core, I would not be working 10 to 12 hours a day without a break just to treat the young people streaming into my practice with anxiety, depression, self-mutilation, panic attacks, insomnia, school refusal, and a host of other issues. I thank you for the emergency phone calls at all hours of the night and the countless interrupted meals, leisure activities, and family occasions when I've had to address a homework meltdown that could not be resolved without professional intervention. How many more children will you send my way, Dr. King? How far do you plan to go with this disaster that you call education, but more closely resembles child endangerment? How desperate are you to be right? What will it take for you to do the right thing? Thank you.